let me start introductions and just a little bit kind of set the stage what we're doing, and then we'll have a few more people trickle in and um, get you on and keeping you somewhat on time because I know you um, got about 45 minutes today. So I'll introduce myself. My name is Ann Yellich. It is good to be here and good to spend the afternoon with you. I'm excited not only to talk about a change in communication, it's one of the things that I just love. <laughs> And um, I'm excited for you because you're walking into change. I don't know if you've looked at it quite that way. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but you've got a great opportunity in front of you. So it's, uh, I think it'll be an interesting uh, path that you're on. So. Um, any questions just about our 45 minutes as we go in? I'll know. Is it like shutting the doors? Are you okay? okay. Thank you. So again, my name is Ann Yelich. Um, I work with uh, the Center for Nonprofit Management. Woo -woo. I, um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, everybody stay too quiet. I just thought I'd, that's right. I just thought I'd wake up. Yes, that's right. Kim <laughs> has been uh, one of the key people that I work with over there, so it's been great uh, working with a lot of the nonprofits here in town. And um, one of the reasons I say I love change and communication is that is my background. I have been working with organizations during times of change my entire career. I started in big corporate America, General Mills, and so forth, um, big uh, healthcare systems. I am from. Minneapolis, so you might hear a little bit of an accent. Where's that from? Where's that from? I don't quite hear it, but. <laughs> and so when I moved here a year ago to Nashville, it is, you couldn't tell me how much change I was about to walk into. So there is nothing in my life that's the same, and I could go on and tell you, but the reason I kind of bring that up is that you start living the own path of what you know you're walking into change, but you don't realize how much it's impacting. And so when we talk about what we're going to change mastery and communications is that that's basically what you're doing. You set your, your uh, self and put yourself into a position where you're, you're choosing to collaborate, to work together with colleagues. And um, you're not only working on a project, but you are also establishing and experiencing change yourself. And so you will not only hopefully have an executed result here at the end, a big goal, but you are walking into that change. And so how you communicate and what you do along the way is really critical. It's one of the things that I certainly enjoy in my career and helping you do that. And so I'll bring you and share with you some content, some of my experiences, but also give you some templates and tools. I see some of you are looking at we've got spreadsheets there. Know that some of the work will certainly be, I understand it's available online afterwards, so that I think that's going to be a little bit easier for you to access, but for our purposes today, we'll certainly uh, provide some content and give you an opportunity to work with you actually have uh, that worksheet in front of you that we'll walk through. Um, any questions, just as we get started, feel free, it's pretty informal. When I say the word change and communication, any, just as quickly, what comes to mind for you? What were you thinking about as you were knowing the session was coming about? You don't like change? <laughs> I just want to sit at this table in this chair. <laughs> what is it? Don't let change always come from improvement to get you. Okay. Always room for improvement. I'll just kind of pick her up. Brian, tell me a little bit more about that when you're saying. Uh, only through communication do you get buy in and change. Yeah, yeah. So yin yang of don't like change is there's going to be change. The degree of communication needed is proportional to the degree of change anticipated. The degree, there you go, shorthand that. The degree of participation. Big change, big No, communication. Big change, big communication, small change, small communication. Mm. Then I'm going to do it vice versa. Okay. Anything else? Any, you can change the 
word mastery and the communication is a prerequisite for to master to effectively initiate and execute a change. So let's say they, so chain uh, mastery is a prerequisite? Uh, I, I think communication is a prerequisite to chain mastery. Communication is a So, give us some of the comments here. You probably have folks who didn't say anything. You might have some thoughts or reactions to that, or some thoughts of your own. How does it make you feel? Certainly, some reservation. Excited? <coughs> well, I'm here to guide you. I hope you find this um, interesting, fun. But uh, let's get kind of into a little bit of the, the meat of some of this stuff. So I mentioned you're walking in change. Part of what the change process that you're about to walk into is the idea is that you want to create key messages that influence people and their thinking and their behavior so that they align with the direction you're sending. And that's what's going on every single time when you're doing, I'll call it formalized change within an organization, within a team, sometimes even at home. How are you communicating? Really being intentional about that. And good communication gets people involved. It doesn't just happen in the vacuum. It gets the people involved that need to participate in that change process. So sometimes, and we'll go through some exercises, sometimes we just um, think it's just, oh, it's just us and our team, but it's an enormous group of people that play into that. So we want to be really conscious about that. And good communication, and effective communication can be really concise. I call it direct. And even very sincere, I think is really important. Those are the three words I like to put to good communication when you're talking about change. It's really any time, but change particular. Short, to the point, use as little jargon as you can. So no, there's no room for hmm, what does that mean or interpretation. As direct as you can or honest. You really have good empathetic or sometimes sincere. Let me talk about um, our first slide here is approach to building commitment. I want to, you had vision, we talked about vision this morning. So this is, if you're familiar with John Hart, Connor, he talks a lot about change, and so I'm using one of his models. Um, hopefully it's somewhat helpful here. If we look at the left there, we've got establishing a climate for change. It goes in, in line with engaging the whole organization, and we can talk about an organization as a truly an entity of an organization, or you might just call your team an uh, organization. And then you've got to implement and sustain that change, so that when you walk off of that project, it's got to be able to kind of keep going. How do you do well, establishing change and communication, communicating the vision is really critical. We'll talk about a slide coming up about what the details of that are. But then engaging the whole organization. It's continual dialogue. You never stop talking. I don't mean in a very literal sense, but the communication should not stop flowing. Even when you have nothing to say, you need to say, at this point I don't know any more information. How many of you have been on the receiving end of that? Because you just, it's, it's all of a sudden the word just stops when you're on a team or an organization, there's no communication, and that's it. Well, I have nothing to say. Well, then that's really helpful <laughs> that things are in the works or they're in the queue or we're waiting on the paper or, you know, maybe if you're doing a construction project at home. It would have been helpful to know that you're waiting on the, on the uh, uh, materials and the equipment to show up. That is having that continual dialogue. Getting the whole organization, what's their input? What ideas do they have? And then you continue that process in the implementation, where we, which aligns down to getting involved in the change process, is that always having a feedback loop. Being in touch with those that are involved so that what's going on, how's it going, what ideas, what input, how did it work for you? Stop being on the same Let me talk about the communication of the vision. Develop a 
telling stories. So you worked on your vision this morning, correct? May or may not be tweaked or finalized for you, but you've got to be some start on that. But when you're communicating that is to get develop a, a compelling story. Providing context of what is this vision about so that people can somewhat relate to it, feel a sense of connection, and have something to focus on. Keep it simple, again, avoid using that jargon. Because we have a lot of words in our culture that have so many different meanings, and it really depends on kind of your background, your interpretation, you know, is it a trigger word for you? Some of those words I'll use, uh, I find in, just in my work, is respect. And working with people, people divide, define that word so differently. Respect is not a word that just says, everybody defines it the same way. Be careful of that. The other word I'll say is transparency. I think it just needs to be <laughs> Nothing's transparent, but not even a window, because it's not ever really clean, right? Communication isn't transparent, in my view. My experience. Just just caution with some of the words that you're using and really kind of a challenge each other as a team. You can kind of really question and get it. You know, what's very concise, specific words. Using analogies and metaphors that, again, people can really relate to. Sometimes an analogy that's outside of the topic or issue that you're working on that can be so simple. I use a lot of analogies in my work with children about children and kids. And people go, oh, yeah, I can relate to that. And then you bring it into the workplace and it really becomes the right thing. A repeat, just I cannot say, repeating the message and bringing that home again. So, because one day I hear it, the next day I might hear it in a little different way. Repeating your message is very helpful. It helps them connect with what your vision is about. Using different forms for the message, so it might come in an email one day, it might come in a printed word on a piece of paper another day, it might be information that's on a Facebook or a LinkedIn page, some kind of using some technology at all to communicate your message. So you have different vehicles of how to get that message out there. And the diversity of that can be really great. Because so again, people connect with different words or different forms of communication. Sending the message in different directions. So it might, if you think of an organization, it might be I'm communicating one way with senior managers, another way with staff, um, your supporters here, your coaches and consultants. <coughs> Be able to talk about the alignment with the vision. How does it fit? How does this fit? If we're doing A, how does that fit with our vision? Make sure people understand that. Here's my rationale. It can certainly be helpful language for people to connect. And then walking the talk. Leaders' actions must align. My experience is probably uh, maybe one of the top two places where organizations make a mistake in setting that vision and then communicating. You can tell they're not on board very quickly. Integrate the message. There are so many ways to integrate your message. In the papers that you hand out, if you're into Zoom, any kind of uh, educational tools, formats, all going to policy and all that kind of stuff. But for now, that's not organizational. So just keep in mind that you can use this place. Any questions on this? Okay, now I'm going to have you pull out this graph chart. And this is assessing your audience as you start working on your project. At the top there, it's called assessing audience communication. So you have your audience of which you are going to be working with. And I'm going to have you uh, complete this form after I walk through some of these. But there's two lenses to look at this today. One can be assessing your audience communication from your team that you're sitting in right now, or it can also be in the audience of which you're going to be working with, that you're assembling and the change, that you're, the execution of the project. And I'll let you decide and we can come back to that, but that's just something to plant in your minds right now. But this is what I love to do, is before you create a communication plan, is to create the assessment of it, to do the intake. It really forces intention about what you're doing. So, on the left-hand column is, I've got an audience. Who is it? It could be organizationally, it could be team, it could be individual. <coughs> Internal is the first page, external is the second page. Sometimes you might, if it's complex, what's that organization? How do they differ from another? Just, if you want to, you can add a brief description. Not necessary if, it's, if your audience isn't clear. 
how critical is the audience to the success of the project? I like simply to do a low, medium, or high. You can do a scale of one to five. In the example here, I did a low, medium, to high. So how critical is that particular audience to the success? So Question? Yes, I'm a little confused. Yep. Um, so does this mean you're looking at who are the audiences from an organizational perspective? Anyone the that's audiences involved. of the organization? Anyone that could be involved as a project. So within the organization. Yeah, within the organization. Your, it could be like your board. It could be your board. might be, if you want to call them a team or call them an organization. That's where you lose me. If you start using a different category team there to explain one of the other categories, so I'm getting lost. All you have to do is define that within your own team. I'm giving you the flexibility of it, and I'm not going to tell you how to define it. I'm just giving you a really loose framework, which I know it's a good question. But you just be clear in your own team how we're going to define. So I'll give an example. Right. Is the CISA board? Okay, how are we going to define board? Do we think them as an organization as a team? And then just force that into the end. It's just a way to sort. Yes. Well, we'll I, see I was it. thinking of his terms, and then yeah. I sort of said, how do I put that into yeah. these categories? Yeah, so for example, I don't know this for sure, but let me make an assumption. Center for Nonprofit Management could be one organization. Okay. But maybe it's Kim, per se, who's in that organization. You might put her under individual. But the organization as a whole is another audience. Right? Okay. And then you might put CNN. Okay. Because those are, in some ways, two separate entities. And you maybe interact, and they're going to have different responses to the communication. But great question. I appreciate the questions to that. So how critical is the audience? How does the change impact this audience? I love this question because what it does is it forces you to get out of yourself. Put yourself into the shoes of the other entity, that individual. Obviously, you can't speak for a whole organization, but you want to have an empathetic view to this to say, how does this change impact them? And it helps you to start to see systemic connections. <clears throat> oh, I didn't realize that they would actually work with these people over here. Boy, there's a connection. We might want to do some communication. <clears throat> so it's a great way to step out of your own self. Some attention, talk about integration, those types of things. What's the effort required to change? So if we have that particular entity, what is it going to take them to change given what we're, again, your topic or your vision is about? What will it be? Write that on a low, medium, or high. And then what concerns does this audience have? And I kind of see that previous question in this one. There could be some tie in here. So what's on their plate that could get in the way? Why are they sitting at this low, medium, and high? Have they been voicing some things all along? An example, maybe that particular team has been without a leader for the last year. So they might be at a high risk because they haven't had communication about a topic you know, in quite some time. Their team's dysfunctional. They haven't been getting a lot of support. They haven't had a lot of performance feedback. Those kinds of things. Make sense? And then finally, what is their level of engagement to the team? And you're just taking this from an outside perspective, right? You're standing outside. What is their level of commitment to the change? You may not know at this point. Maybe you've got a team leader or an organizational leader that is right there being a great supporter, and that might be a high. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So once you get this completed, again, it's just an assessment. You take the data from your first column, how critical is the audience to the success, and you start plotting, plotting those audience people onto your chart here on your third page. This is going to put dots, put the letters, the initials of the organization, and you've got these four quadrants. You look at that quadrant, it says high and low. On the left uh, side, we've got critical to the success. Are they low or high? On the matrix, effort to change the low or the high. If your folks are on the top level, on the top here, they're required to pretty much um, 
maintain confidence, you got to con feed and continue your communication with them, or you manage them really closely because they're higher risk. If they're low and low, you kind of monitor and you keep them in touch, you keep them in the loop, but they're not going to take as much effort for you on the communication. It doesn't mean you don't ignore them. So some people are going to be more effort for you. Yeah, would it be possible to give an example? Yeah. Um, <coughs> let's go back to, well, let me throw it to the group here. Does anyone have an idea right now that's, What do you have, dude? What do you work with? So we can carry that board exam. Yep. Board. I like so that. Most agencies yep. have boards, right? And so we need to keep them informed of the collaboration and what we're doing and they need support from them. Right? And, and so if you rated them on the low, medium, or high, right? Let's say you give them a high level. What's the particular topic? Let's say, and let me just think of an example I have. Um, I've got an organization I'm working with on a staff uh, uh, structure change. And so I don't get a lot of work with the board, but I have the board president showing up with the CEO, so we're doing some work together. But the board certainly needs to be in the loop about the communication. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about my communication. Well, there's a risk for me because I want to make sure that the communication is certainly being relayed, but it's not my decision. It's just maybe more of an informative feedback kind of approach. Mm -hmm. So I would say, does the board, uh, what's the, how critical are they? They're pretty critical because they're going to want to sign off on the structure of the organization. But I know I've got a good CEO, a good executive director right next to me. I meet with her pretty regularly. The board chair is sitting there. She's missed a few meetings, but she's there. So I'm not terribly concerned about it. The organization has been sitting over here in my audience column. The board, I actually put under the team. And the individual, I put the board member. And then I rated them. They're high as far as critical to the success, but I didn't have a lot of concerns. The only concern I did write for me was that the board member actually um, missed a few meetings, but it wasn't alarming. So then if I would go to play this out, which I didn't because it was really kind of a small issue for me, is that I might plot that medium or kind of um, medium, I would put it kind of right in the center so it's right in the dot here. So I'm just watching. It's not a high issue for me on this particular project. But when you have greater complexity, you have more board members, when I'm maybe in touch with all the board members, I might have the plots up here in the right quadrant where it's high risk, high critical to success, and the effort to change is really high. Maybe it's a dysfunctional board. Maybe it's a new board. Maybe the board chair just came on board. So how are they going to change if they or if they're seeing you know different views on how that staff structure is supposed to be? All it is is just keep in mind it's an assessment. It gives me kind of a whole oh, heads up that when I move into my next planning phase, I can then be very get very specific about the words I use, my approach in the language, how I communicate messages mm -hmm. to that group. It's just a visual. You can skip this, but I know there's a lot of people I work with who love the visuals. Because your your data point, if you're into numbers or ratings or just this, excuse me, first page, your critical success column, it's all right there for you. Some people just like the visual. And it's a nice little roadmap. I don't want to make it more complicated. I just give you the tools because some people are more visual. The data is there for you. You, you know, have options there. So, Ann, can I just one more question? Yeah. So, like your clients yep. would be considered like a team of people in which to communicate with? Or like it depends, on, how you it depends on how you, know, you noted your audience. Okay. Like I have CNM is my audience, but Kim is usually my point of contact. But some of her colleagues are there as well. Again, it depends on the topic. Okay. But since I go rogue, you've got me. Exactly. <laughs> as an individual, because I'm hard. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
I've seen some puzzled looks. Some are okay. Any questions? Yeah. Did you consider the consumer base that you're trying to either provide the service for having an impact? Is that an internal or is that to be going into the external? That might be external, but it can be so broad. So then what that tells me is I want feedback from that external. How do I know this whole broad base? Well, maybe you've done data points, maybe you've done collection points, even, and that's why you even created the project you have, right? Because you've been out there in the marketplace, or you've been out there in the communities, and you know that this particular issue, that we're shortage of food, or that this particular um, group of people aren't having certain you know, funding, or whatever it might be. So you have that data point. But you may need to go out there and have more specific one-on-ones, or more focus groups, or interviews to be able to really pulse on what's going on. Good questions. Questions before I move on to communication planning? So communication planning is that your audience may almost be the same in all, in all situations, but what are your key messages? So when I'm about to communicate, what's our key message to the board? What's our key message to a community? The topic can be exactly the same. It's the message that might be a little different. You don't, this is the example I always give. When you have to relay difficult information to a child that's four, to a child that's 10, you don't tell them the same way. It's just a different scope, different lens to the world, different uh, capacity to absorb information. This is the same thing. Topic, your issue might be the same, but my key messages to a board and the community are going to be different. How are they going to be different? And so you just put in kind of a few words. It might be, what are the key messages? And then when you get to the detail to actually construct the message, then you can fill it in. Yeah. Can you clarify for uh, the group, what is the key message that you want to Or is this a communication plan that supports the collaboration and its execution itself? If it's both. Well, it can be both. Yeah. And if you haven't put all the detail around what the communication, uh, around what the collaboration looks like, yeah, this may be a tool we come back to. Exactly. Yes. So keep the template. Exactly. Uh, but, but potentially what you know you're going to have to from a communications perspective to get your collaboration off the ground and that's right. That. That's right. The reason I wanted to introduce this today is because this can be the pilot for your team to be able to kind of function. That's why I say you're walking into change, right? You signed up for these projects. This is all new. You may not even have it all flushed out. That's kind of what today is about. But when you try to get your project, as they're defined, I was reading some of the bios, you know, the brief paragraphs of what your intent is. That's the change process for those people who are going to receive it. Again, pull this up. But it's a little bit more, I don't know if I want to call it safe, but it can be somewhat of a pilot or a practice if you haven't used tools like this before to say, let's use it on our own team and see where it tweaks. And you'll always find it in any tool I've ever used. Oh, I don't like this column or you tweak. It's, you know, it's, it's good or bad, you know? You find some things you really connect with, they're ding and yang to just about everything. So you'll have that opportunity before, if you want to say, bring it live to your outside project or to get to that execution, you'll be able to tweak it. Great question. <coughs> so a key message is due date. When are we going to send that message to the board? What's the format? We're going to send it. I'm going to you know, show up and be, attend a board meeting. That's our forum. Who's responsible? It's Ryan. So that's how you do it. And then the status, I put that green, red, red. Sometimes people on a quick eye, you can put the date, I'm going to the board meeting. We're on hold because we're not doing it until July. Once it's done, you might move it to, you know, um, or you get some approval. The status is, we'll go ahead. That kind of thing. So again, use that column how you want. Don't worry about the colors. If it works for you, great. Questions? Comments? Concerns? So 
Okay, here's the working uh, assignments done. What's your first name? Anna. Anna. Let's, at your table, um, start with it as the practice in your team. How might you assess your team and where you're at? Using the assessment page. How critical are we to each other to the success of this project? This might be some really honest conversation going on. Because if Brian is out, I'll use this group here. If Brian is gone one day, how critical is he? If he's going to be on vacation for three months, how critical is he? If he falls ill, how critical is he? So you may want to put all of you as individuals. You may want to put your organization. So again, slice and dice it that works for you to make the best sense. But it's, this can be great, honest conversation time to fill this out. Because this helps you create the plan. I'll check in, walk around, or do you have any questions? And you were like brand new. <laughs> I was. Brand new. Yeah, yeah. You got said it takes a place. Yeah. Hey, front swing about the one. Yeah. 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 Yesterday, so I know you had things from right As I walked around to the tables, you had some good conversation yeah. going. I think it really unfolds a lot. It's a discussion, some brainstorming. That is part Lebanese. And if I can have your attention to the front, that would be great. <laughs> you know, it brings a lot of good conversation. So hopefully, you can find these, these tools helpful. Uh, there can always be stumbling blocks. And I just want to wrap up with a couple of things here. You've got a couple more slides, and you've got them um, in front of you. This effective communication I bring up, it is so obvious. You've learned it maybe in third grade, but I cannot stress it enough. I'm going to bring you back to basics for a moment. Really good effective communication. You call, I call it the sandwich effect. It is looking at your words, your tone, and your body language, and they need to be in alignment. When we are working in teams, when we work in an organization, when we work with our community, just our day-to-day -day communication, those three need to be alignment. And so it is sometimes ask yourself, how do I think I'm coming across in this moment? Because it can be frustrating, we get invested, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing if you didn't have great interest and passion in trying to change and make things a better place. And so it starts with ourselves sometimes. It can get frustrating, those emotions get high. So check this. Check the tone, the alignment, that kind of thing. Be consistent. And then I'm going to send you on to the next one. 98% of the population ignite misunderstandings. You talked about, I think, with Steve Joyner this morning about conflict resolution techniques. I'm trying to get you from a point of good communication and trying to maybe avoid some of those conflicts, although Steve provides you great work, is that avoid some of those conflicts. And the population can have a lot of misunderstanding when we don't, in these three points here. We don't say what we mean, we don't do what we say we're going to do, and we don't say what is when it's so. So what does that mean? So how often do we just run by somebody and just come, yeah, I'll talk to you, blah, 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 blah. right? Or we don't say, it, you hurt my feelings when we hurt my feelings. Or, you know what, I don't feel like anybody's listening. And we start again. That's what number one means. We tend to speak in code and kind of skirt all the way around the issue. So if we say what we mean right in the moment, we'll have greater success in our communication. And do what they say they're going to do. This is what kids say, you broke your promise. Right? You've heard that. So when you say you're going to meet the deadline, Meet the deadline. When you say you're going to do, you know, we're going to gather on the 21st, or we're going to get together in a three, few weeks, follow through on that. And if not, you revisit it, but at least you have the conversation. And then say what is so when it is so. So speak up. Here's the point. If you could practice that and give yourself the 24-hour rule, or three days, or at the worst case, you address the issue no longer than, you know, within seven days, don't go beyond a week, you're going to have greater success as a team. It's communication, communication, communication. 
my experience is that teams that stay current, meaning they say those three points when it happens, the greatest chance of success. And you're also modeling it for the people that you're about to work with. And I'll give you the last one, we won't go through it. Sense of humor is important, by the way, too. Here are some of the things on communication that a lot of teams have said really work for them, and that's noted in your slides, and I won't go through that at the time. So. Questions, comments? Well, we're in time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.